White Dog, you gonna dig out one of your other uh, classic radios for Old Radio Night? Yeah, I'm trying to look and see what I got uh, that I can hook up that I haven't used already. I mean, everything I got in here I've used, I think. Uh, the only one I'm not sure of is uh, this Cherokee bass. Well, what you got? You, what 20? You got any 23 channels you haven't used yet? Well, I guess you'll just have to pick out one of them and uh, pick out the, and use it again. I guess I'm just going to have to buy me a couple old radios. I know that guy over there, uh, uh, your, your friend, your friend has a lot of radios. I mean, your twin brother. <laughs> My twin brother. <laughs> I suppose you might be able to come over here and uh, finagle a couple of them out of me. I definitely have some brand new in the box over here. And of course I have that TRC-38 that you'd like to get your hands on. Yeah, man. Uh, well, we can talk. We can talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't you say that was the first radio you ever had? Yep, yeah, TRC-38. Yep, I'll have to get that out for all radio night. I don't, I don't have it. I got another one already hooked up, but... Maybe I'll get that one out for next week. The TRC, Radio Shack TRC 30A. That's definitely classic radio from 1976. Yeah, I remember when I first got it, man. I was in my glory. I had a base station. And then I went out and bought a D-104, Tug 9. Put that on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember looking at that radio when I was uh, about 12 or 13. 12 years old, I guess. Maybe 13, too. I remember that 1976 Radio Shack catalog, the red one, and looking in that catalog at that radio and drooling over it. Of course, I was, didn't have any money, but I definitely wanted one. Yeah, I bought mine used. Uh, I think I paid $60 for it. Well, you did good. That's not. That's got a nice little receive on it. The selectivity could be beefed up a little. You know, it does get a little coach handling, but it's a fairly quiet receiver on it. I went the other way around. I started because I was young and didn't have any money. I had a little walkie-talkie, a little channel 14 walkie-talkie. Then I got a bigger three-channel walkie-talkie that you had to hold with two hands with a big five-foot-long <laughs> telescoping antenna. It took like 10 batteries or 12 rechargeable batteries. Then I finally got a little Midland 13-853, uh, 23-channel mobile on a Radio Shack power supply. And man, I talked on that thing so much the first few days I, I got for Christmas. I talked on it so much within two days I got I lost my voice. I hear you. And then my third base, uh, my second base station was this uh, that RCA RCA co-pilot, which I it's in line right now. I could use that tonight. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Somebody had one of those on eBay the other day uh, for a fairly reasonable price. I think it was the 40 channel version. Yep, well that was the one that was on eBay. I don't remember what they were asking, but it wasn't that it wasn't unreasonable. Yeah, I think I, I paid uh, I got it on a scratch and dead sale. I used to work for a uh, retail store and I think I paid thirty dollars for it, brand new in the box. Oh, you got a steal. Okay. 
Okay. Well, whenever y'all get ready to do whatever you're going to do, let me know. I already got mine going. I started it when White Dog showed up. I might have to get out one of my other radios with a teeny weeny itsy bitsy meter. I'll pull up my Craco, uh, maybe my KCB-4010. That's a 40 channel. Or I got the 23 channel version too, but it's got that little dinky winky half inch meter that you gotta have a magnifying glass <laughs> to, to uh, look at. Of course, when I was 12 years old, I guess I could read it back then when I had 20 20 vision, but I don't anymore. Get a flash now lens hooked to it. Yeah, you get get one of those magnifying big magnifying glasses on a on a stand with a little fl round fluorescent tube, you know, and sit that in front of it. They put those little dinky winky meters on mobiles. Now, how the heck are you going to see that thing in a mobile? You got to like bend down all cockeyed and put your hand close down in the dash to see that thing. Okay, Ben said, uh, <clears throat> Night Ranger's already got his running, and uh, 987 said he's got his running. I'll get mine running the old radio night, and uh, I'll be standing by. Y'all tell me what you got there. Roger. <laughs> All right, old radio night, December 30th, 2016. This is Night Ranger. And I, last week I was talking on a 23-channel Craco CB Deluxe. And this time I'm also talking on the Craco CB Deluxe, but this is the 40-channel version. Last time I had the 23-channel Crystal Synthesis version, which was the KCB 2320. And this time I'm on the 40-channel KCB 4020. This is Phase Lock Loop with the highly sought after PLL 02A. The radios look almost identical except for the 40 channel channel selector and the meter is different. The, uh, this one has more of the, more of the classic uh, Cybernet little green and red and white meter. And I got a Turner Plus 3 hook to it and it's on a uh, Radio Shack Micronta power supply with a old gray four tube DNA radar kicking about 100 watts into my homemade wired J-pole antenna at about 90 feet in the air. Oh, and for the technically inclined, I had to put a relay in this radio to make this Turner Plus 3 work, because otherwise it'd squeal uh, something awful if you don't do that. A little relay that disconnects the mic audio wire when I'm receiving. Well, it sounds real good. I tell you what, the modulation is right up there on that one. It wasn't when I took it out of the box, and this is brand new in the box. It was like 20 or 30 percent modulation on the meter. So I went in there and turned the ALC up till it was about 70% uh, modulation, 70 to 80. But man, when I first got it, it would barely move the ALC meter. That's the only radio I think I've seen that only showed 20 or 30%. But anyway, modulation meter showing 70 to 80%. Now I didn't wind it out, but I definitely had brought it up just a little bit. Well, this sounds real good, no doubt. I tried to set it so it still had that, you know, I didn't want that blaring sound. When I wound it wide open, I had that blaring audio sound. I didn't want that, so still got the ALC on, didn't disable it. Anyway, pick it up, and uh, over to whoever's next. All right, man, you got a good cup in the front foot radio? Oh, yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay, I'll go ahead and kick it off, then. This is 116, the crazy man. I got a gal there. Mobile gas radio. I've got a deal on the corner. I've got an uh, echo on it. I've got an extra channel. That's all I got, all I can see of it. It's <laughs> got a little meter in it. All right, that's all I got. I, I can't read the rest of it because I can't, no, can't read it. That's why they call me crazy man when we back out. I can 
Wait, dog, you lost your audio. Try again. Okay, how about now? That works. Definitely sounds like a hand mic, but it's still got plenty of audio. Okay. 
Okay. Well, anyway, it's just a stock hand mic. It's a big old funny looking hand mic there, no doubt. But uh, anyway, it's uh, that's their design. And uh, so, all right, well, I'll stand by and maybe the uh, intelligent uh, no name will come back and talk to us there. We're standing by. Yeah, he quit. in the saddle again. too long I've heard it all I'm just numb to it at this point Just in case you don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's somebody that can't reach us. Yeah, whoever that is, in case you don't know, you don't have any audio. I can hear him, but he's real faint. Uh, who is that way out there? Let me, let me see if I can reach you. Did you say cowboy? Hey, cowboy, something's going on, man. I can hardly hear you. Thank you. 
there, Night Ranger. Uh, 21 minutes, 15 seconds. It should have been in there uh, 15 seconds ago, and it would have been 21. Okay, I've got 30, 18 minutes. Oh, shoot, I got a 16-gig uh, uh, SD card in this thing. I, it'd probably go for 12 hours. Right, right. Well, the only thing, when I get real, real long there, uh, it just takes so long to upload it. So, I, uh, and then, anyway, uh, not a, uh, 987, you said you had 11 minutes? I got a crappy TRC-14 I may have to put in. It's got one of those little LED meters, you know, in the late 1980s, early 1990s. Radio Shack had all those ugly CBs with the little LED meters. That's one of them. I hated those LED meters. I still don't like them. But the uh, Radio Shack, I guess they were trying to be cheap. Or I don't, know if they, I guess they thought it was cool. But you remember for a while, it's like every radio they had had those stupid five-bar LED meters, and I wouldn't buy one. Well, Cobra had one, too. But they were good for fox and hounds. You take one of them, uh, and you don't hook it up to your antenna. You just uh, lay it up on your dashboard, and you go by your regular antenna, regular radio. And when that thing goes full scale, get out of your truck or car and look. There's the radio right there. I just I didn't want anything to do with them. I think my dad bought like two of them for his cars, but he didn't. He wasn't big in the big CB. He just wanted it for emergency. But I hated them. They had that. Uh, they had the TRC 451, which was a good radio with the analog meter, and then they replaced it with the TRC 453. The radio itself was a good radio, but it had that stupid five-bar LED meter, and I, I refused to buy one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the 457. That was that 40 channel. No, 20. No, that was the 40-channel sideband base. I think it had two meters and a clock, didn't it? No, not the 457. Oh, no, I don't. I don't remember the 447 right off. Yeah, the 457. You're right. They had the 457, the 458. I think that's right. And then they had the 490. And they had a four. I think there was a 489. That was that scanner base or something like that. But no, I don't know which one you're talking about. The only, I think the only Radio Shack CB I bought was the realistic TRC 451. That was it. The TRC 451. And I love that radio. I've still got one. Actually, I have like two worn out ones and one real good one. And I have, matter of fact, I have one brand new in the box. Uh, they fight everything. That's a good radio. That's my one of my favorite CB radios of all time. The realistic TRC 451. And that's a good radio. Great receive on that thing.
money to blow you know not worrying about anything else I, I had an old blue Dodge Dart it wasn't a souped up one or anything but that's what I had in my very early 20s I probably just for nostalgia it'd be kind of nice to have that and I think I had a, a Royce I had a Royce 609 40 channel mobile in it and a little Kmart uh, trunk mount antenna on it <laughs> and and that was my car when I was about 20 or 21 years old Yeah, but that's what I'd. I'd uh, it'd be kind of fun to have that, you know, if I had money to blow to hunt down one of those and uh, rebuild my 20, 21 year old car. Right. When I started out and got my first mobile, I was driving my wife's car. It was a 73 Mustang Grande. It was the, the square back. And I had, I, I, right in the back, in the back of the window, I put one of them ball mounts. And I had a, um, the largest fire stick you could buy on top of that car. Well, they make, what, about a seven, seven or eight foot fire stick, don't they? Yeah, that's what I had, man. It was long. <laughs> and I, I, she wasn't too happy when I drilled the hole in the back of her car. Oh, I'm sure she wasn't. Yeah, I had a cane. I still, actually, I bought two of them. I, and I still have uh, one of them. I don't think I've ever hooked it up. But unfortunately, that trunk, that trunk mount, it won't fit on the new cars. The lips are so tight on the trunks now that you can't fit, the, fit those old trunk mount antennas on there. They're too thick. They won't fit. But I still have one of those things sitting over in the corner. Uh, I bought one and then some asshole up at uh, the college I was going to bent the whip and he, like tied it in, like a pretzel knot. And uh, so anyway, I got a replacement whip. But at some point, just in case he did it again, they were cheap and so I bought a second one. And I still have the second one. It's never even been installed. But what am I going to install it on now now that it, the new cars won't fit them? <laughs> I was Carolina Pirate. That was my handle originally, which is why the YouTube can, uh, channel is Carol Ina Pirate. I tricked YouTube. I tried to create a YouTube channel called Carolina Pirate, and they said, no, you got to use your real first name. So I told them my first name was Carol, and I told them my last name was Ina Pirate. Yeah, well, those were only two handles I had. Car uh, Carolina Pirate, I had that from like age 12 up to about age 19 or 20. And then I changed it to Night Ranger. And that's been my handle ever since. I remember we were sitting on there one day and the skip came in from up around New York and a bunch of those guys were coming in and they had the same accent you do and I commented to 21 I said we got a whole bunch of white dogs in here and those guys up there heard me <laughs> they didn't know what I meant when I called them all said they all were a bunch of white dogs I had to explain well when I get out there and talk to uh, New England New York Rhode Island they think that I'm pulling a prank they don't believe I'm in South Carolina one of my uh, friends who listened to our video gate, he commented about that. He listened to you talk, and he said something about you being a transplant. You know, when I, when I, as soon as I open my mouth, I don't care where I'm at. I'm at a party or something, and um, the first thing out of their mouth, where are you from, New York? Well, I got the same thing when I lived in Phoenix, Arizona. 
when I moved out there in 1991, you know, I had the full-blown South Carolina accent. And same thing, I couldn't put out, t say, two words for somebody to say, oh, honey, where are you from? You know, and then after I lived out there a while, my accent toned down a little. But it still, would, you know, they didn't say as much about it later on, but still, they would still mention it. And then when I finally moved back to South Carolina, people here would pick up, I guess I had a little bit of the Phoenix accent mixed in with my Southern accent, so the locals around South Carolina would ask me where I was from, because now I had a little of both. Well, I've been here for 18 years, I still haven't picked up that, that Southern twang. No, you haven't. But you know, I wouldn't hear my Southern accent when I was talking. But if I like recorded the message on my answering machine, I'd play it back. Then I'd hear my southern accent, and I'd like try to re record the uh, answering machine several times, trying to get that southern accent out of my voice, and <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> I hear you. All right, man. I'm gonna take a standby. Let somebody else get in there.
Somebody was cooking something good outside, like ribs or something. Boy, it was sure smelling good on the barbecue, man. I tell you what, I'd like to do that myself there. I guess I'm going to get some canned uh, a collard greens and stuff like that and uh, have it there. I'm, I'm not going to, uh, you know, do all that work on those cotton picking things. Yeah, I don't have uh, too much trouble uh, cooking collard greens. Yeah, to cook them so damn long as long as I make you sick. Yeah, but they're good, though, and they're done right. Oh, yeah, my sister knows exactly what to do with my sister and my father. Okay, tell her we're on the way. That hey, used to. She ain't find no good collard greens yet. Oh. The collard greens and them good old sweet potatoes. You find the right ones now. Lord, Lord. You want to take some home with you? Hey, Count. Hey, go ahead. All right, I'm back on my 55. Yeah, but that sounds better than 55. I got you out and proud now. Oh, yeah, what was up when you was all? The Galaxy Saturn, it's got a short in the, in the power supply, I believe, uh, 21, I believe it's got a short in the power supply, and it gets hot, and then it don't want to talk. Oh, I got you. Go up the right, the right trying to get you one of them little small spot spots to run that radio. The, the, the ship got some damn gone little ones up there. I think, uh, I think it's over. Uh, 14 amps. Uh, yeah, I got one right now running this little 55. I got one right, right now running this 55, and I got a 52 amp over there at Ghost I got to go pick up. I done bought it. I paid for it and all, and uh, I took it back over there so you can check it out and everything. But uh, I got to go get that 52 amp. I got it. That series pass transistor in those Galaxy Saturns is known for burning out if the ALC is relaxed. It mentions it in the service manual. I had a copy of that at one time. I, th I don't think I have it anymore, but matter of fact, I may have given it 21. But that service manual says that regulator is prone to go out if you relax the ALC on a Galaxy Saturn. Oh, okay. Well, that's probably what it is. Yeah, but now, last week that Saturn was blowing smoke. I know, it gets hot and it does that. And then it won't do it for a couple of days. And then it'll get back to doing it again. enjoyed it as well night ranger bringing my old radio night recording to a close on this craco kcb 23 no wait craco kcb 4020 40 channel radio my galaxy 55 and i'm rolling that's everybody 